you have your Bibles with you, and I certainly hope that you do, please open them to the Gospel according to Luke, the 8th chapter. Very brief passage of Scripture today. Actually, we're just reading uh, the 18th verse, just part of it, as our passage for our message this morning. Thank you for listening. It's the title of the sermon. So I hope that you're getting ready to get in a listening position because I always believe that God has a very special word for us whenever we gather corporately like this to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Sometimes it's difficult for us to hear God. Sometimes it's difficult for us to feel God or experience God or to find God. And I've often said this, if you're having trouble finding God, if you're having trouble hearing God, if you're having trouble experiencing God, stop what you're doing. And he'll find you. He always has, and he always will. And I believe that God has a very special message for us this morning to honor the reading of his word. Let's look in the Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter, verse 8. 18 and stand as we look at this passage of scripture Jesus said therefore consider carefully how you listen I'm going to read it one more time Jesus said therefore consider carefully how you listen and this is the word of God for the people of God and may God add his blessings to the reading of his holy an inspired word, and all God's people together said, Thank you, you may be seated. Small children seem to delight in listening. Have you ever seen a child at the age of four or five that's locked in to a movie, locked in to something on the television? In my mind's eye, I can go right back to Vine Grove, Kentucky. My oldest daughter, Laura Jo, was probably about three or four, and she was hooked on Winnie the Pooh. I'm telling you, she loved Winnie the Pooh movies. And one of the things that we could do to occupy her time was to take an old VHS. Y'all remember VHS. It's hard to believe we used to put those big old things in machines and watch movies on those things. But we would put in a little Winnie the Pooh movie. And Laura Jo would just be absolutely, positively locked into that movie. You could say something to her, she wouldn't hear you. The house could be on fire, she wouldn't know it. She was listening intently to the storyline of the Hundred Acre Woods and Winnie the Pooh, Rabbit, and Piglet. You and I need to learn to listen like that, especially to each other. Watch children. When they want your attention, they'll beg for it. They'll plead for it. Sometimes when I'm here in this sanctuary, I, I will feel a little tug on my coat, and I'll look down, and it's a child. It, it, it's a child that, it, that is wanting my attention. And, and oftentimes, you as parents say things like this, and, and it almost takes me back to a time in biblical days. Y'all don't worry the preacher. Leave the preacher alone. Does that remind you of another story? A story in the Bible when Jesus was there and the children were coming to him and he was blessing them and the disciples said, leave the teacher alone. And Jesus said, no, let the children come to me. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Children today now want us to focus our attention on what they're saying. Our children are, are demanding, they're begging, and they're pleading for us to, to hear what they're going through in life. And sometimes what happens is that, that you and I as parents, we have developed what's known as an ostrich mentality when it comes to our children. And that is, if I don't hear 
what's happening to them. If I don't hear what they're going through, then, then obviously they're not going through it. But our children are wanting to talk to us. They're wanting a safety net, as the video explained a few moments ago. They're wanting to know that there is somebody who loves them so much that they are actually going to listen to their thoughts. They're going to listen to their dreams. They are going to listen intently to the challenges that are before. It's amazing what children hear. It's amazing what they catch from you. It's amazing what they will repeat that you have said or maybe somebody else has said. But also children, they want to be heard. Our children want to hear that they are important. They want to believe that you care about what they're going through. And if you're going to care about your children, if you're going to care about anybody, you got to be willing to listen to them. And sometimes it's just hard to listen to others. And why is that? Because we are such big talkers. And we just seem to talk, 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 talk all the time. And we want others to be quiet so that we can talk. And we can have our say. And we can express our ideas. Because there's so much for us to say. And I guarantee it today. If we were to divide men and women on each side of the room and we were to say, does your husband really listen to you? The majority of the women would say, no. He has no clue what I'm going through. If I were to ask the men, does your wife truly listen to you? Uh, they will say, she doesn't have one iota of what I go through each and every day. As a matter of fact, I don't really think she cares. We saw just a few moments ago, children, they were being honest. When, when you ask the children, do your parents really listen to you? The children say, no, they really don't. And if you were to ask our young people, do your parents listen to you? They will say, probably not. And then we come back to the parents. Parents, do your children listen to you? You would say, I have a hard time conveying my message to them. I don't think they really get what I'm trying to say. Here is our problem. It is my problem because I think preachers are some of the worst. We're such big talkers that we fail to listen. Lucy and Charlie Brown are talking to each other one day, and Lucy says, when I grow up, I want to be the host of my own talk show. And Charlie Brown said, oh, that's wonderful. I mean, you want a show where you can exchange thoughts and ideas with various people? And Lucy said, no. I want a show where I can do all the talking. Now, isn't that us? That's us, isn't it? We want to do all of the talking. And what happens is it leads to frustration to the people that we love the most. There is nothing more painful as a parent to have a child look at you and say, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. We as parents think that we have all the answers. But sometimes we don't even know the question. And it will break your heart when your adult child looks at you and says, you don't hear me. We're not listening. We're not listening to the struggles that the teenagers face nowadays at school. We don't listen to what our elementary children are, are going through. Because we have become such a busy society. We just don't have time to deal with it. So often we fail to hear what others are trying to tell us. A crumpled up note was found next to a teenage boy who had taken his life. 
And these were the words that he wrote. Nobody has ever listened to one word I have said. Maybe they'll listen now. From the very beginning of time, humanity has had a hard time with communication. And communication is more than just verbal. Communication is nonverbal as well. A conversation demands that one person talk and another listens and then has the opportunity to express their opinion. But from the very beginning of time, we've had this gap, if you will, in communication. This is no new phenomenon. This has been around since the beginning of time. Adam and Eve were given free reign of the Garden of Eden. And God said, you can have everything that your heart desires, with the exception of the tree of fruit of knowledge. They didn't listen to God, did they? And from that, sin entered into humanity. Cain did not listen to his father. Jacob didn't listen to his brother nor his father. Joseph's brothers did not listen to him. Wound up with him being sold into slavery. Peter didn't listen to Jesus when, when Jesus said, you know, on this very night, before the rooster crows, you are going to deny me three times. Peter did not listen to his Lord. Jesus in the Gospel of Luke instructs us to consider carefully how we hear. There are messages that are given to us on a daily basis. Not what you hear, but how we listen makes all the difference in the world. And there are some important lessons that we need to learn today that are going to help us to be more effective listeners. So, this morning, let's do something we haven't done in a while. Let's all get in the listening position. You ready? That wasn't an option. I'm asking you to get in the listening position. Be ready to hear what God has for you. Tune in to what he's saying. And sometimes we can have negative things that interfere with us hearing what God has to say. One of the poorest ways of listening involves distracting habits that we're not even aware that we're doing. Have you noticed that? Sometimes you can have a conversation with an individual and, and, and just because of these habits that we have developed, we have the inability to really connect and listen to one another. Oh, dig I can't believe that went off. Just a second. I'm going to need to answer this. I am in the midst of preaching. I'll hit you later. Okay. Anybody ever done that to you? You see, this has become the most helpful tool in the ministry that I've ever had. It's also the most destructive tool in the ministry that I've ever had. Now, a few moments ago, and I whipped this thing out to start looking at it, you went, I can't believe he's doing that. When you go out to eat, or you just look around today, what are we doing? Everybody's on their phones, aren't they? Ooh, we become so busy. We just got to text everybody, don't we? Because of this, I'm never away. You have access to me 24-7. You have access to anybody that's in your file 24-7. And so what has happened is this has become a distraction. And when people that are important to us Want to talk to us? We're too busy on our phones. Just, just as an experiment, if you got your cell phone with you, hold it up with you right now. Hold it up. Let, let's just do an experiment. Everybody's got your cell phone. Hold it. 
Are we so busy that we think that we can't go an hour without this thing? Listen to me. If God wants to get in touch with you, he will. You don't need this. This is what I would challenge you to do. Leave it when you come in here. I don't even bring it in for the most part. Every now and then, I will bring it in. But for the most part, I don't even bring it into this worship center. I don't want anything distracting me. And if something is vitally important, don't you think somehow, some way, you'll get the message? What did we do before we had them? How did we function? And you know what's happened? We have created a generation of non-communication verbally. We can't carry on a conversation. You know what we ought to do? I think our prayer life would ratchet up about three or four notches if we just text God. Lord, how are you doing today? Got a few things on my mind. That'd be a whole lot easier. But we have to be willing to verbally communicate to God. And we're developing distracting habits that are keeping us from listening to others. We're kind of like, hurry up and finish talking because I have something that I really want to say. Y'all remember the comic strip Ziggy? Ziggy just seemed to never have things going his way. Ziggy meets a friend one day, and the guy I guess, says, Hi, Ziggy, how are you doing? He says, Well, I'm in an emotional slump. Nothing exciting ever happens in my life, maybe because I fail to initiate things, but I do put some credence in horoscopes. But I'm happy with my ability to take things in stride. And he walks away, his friend does, and said, Well, it's been good talking to you. Now, what's happened? Ziggy is communicating to his friend, but his friend's not listening. One of my dear friends, Dr. Norman Shoemate, was telling me this this past week. He said, the funniest thing happened to me at church. He said, church of all places. He said, we were getting ready for worship, and he said, you know how people are kind of mingling around the, 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 the auditorium, greeting one another? He said, this lady who has sat next to me for about three or four years came up to me and said, Norman, how are you doing today? And he said, just terrible. And she said, well, that's great. That's great. God bless you. Now, she had already anticipated what he was going to say, right? And so the common response, how are you doing, is what? What? Fine. Do you know what fine stands for? Feelings I'm not expressing. F-I-N-E. I I feel fine. Those are feelings I'm not expressing. But he said, I'm feeling terrible. And she thought he was going to say, I'm fine. So she said, that's great. See you later. We need to listen to each other by removing distracting habits that we develop. Then there are others I would call insecure listeners. And that is, we're afraid to listen because the things that we hear may intimidate us. Listen closely this morning. And this is a lesson for young people. Others can only intimidate you if you let them. And I'm going to tell you this. You are as important as anybody on this planet. Do you know why you're as important as anybody on this planet? Because God created you. He created you in his image. And you are the very crown of his creation. So don't let people intimidate you. What I have discovered is mostly mostly insecure people are the ones who are intimidated. So if you see yourself as inferior, then you will be inferior. But you can't see yourself inferior if you're created by God. We're too busy sometimes trying to to make a great impression on others that we become intimidated. This past week I got to meet a a friend of my daughter's and, and one of the things I said about the individual was this. 
I love the fact that this person didn't go out of their way to try to impress me. They were just themselves. And in being themselves, I enjoyed being with them because they weren't trying too hard to make an impression on me. Not that they would want to make an impression on me, but they were just themselves. And when we can just be ourselves, life becomes so much easier. And when we can teach our children that, that they are uniquely made in the image of God and God has a plan for their lives, then life becomes a whole lot easier. When I understand there's only one person I have to impress, and that's my Lord and Savior. When I impress Him, when I live for Him, when I desire for Him to be the very uh, beginning of my day, when I desire for Him to be the center of my attention, then my life becomes a whole lot easier. And I'm not threatened by others. Maybe you've seen the Peanuts comic strip where Linus and Lucy and Charlie Brown are lying on a hillside and they're looking up and Lucy says, you know, if you use your imaginations, you can see different images in the clouds. Linus, what do you see? And Linus says, well, over there I see a, 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 a cloud that looks like the map of British Honduras. And over here, you know, that almost looks like the profile of the great painter Thomas Eakins. Over here, I see the impression of the stoning of Stephen. Wow. Charlie Brown, what do you see? And Charlie Brown says, I was going to say a ducky and a horsey, but I've changed my mind. <laughs> now, why was that? Charlie Brown was intimidated. Didn't matter if he saw a horsey or a ducky. It's what he saw. But sometimes we become intimidated by others. Some people can make us uncomfortable by the words that they use, by the wisdom we perceive that they have, and they can make us feel insecure. Which leads me to this. Others will practice what I call selective hearing. And that is that we hear just what we want to hear. Now, that's beneficial if you live next to a railroad station. But selective hearing will get you in a lot of trouble. Ladies, is this a problem in your relationship at home? My wife included. How many of you think this is a problem? Hold your hand up. Go ahead. Doesn't matter. We've got this recorded. Something happens to you. We got their profiles. We know it. We tend to hear what we want to hear. And sometimes we're missing the main message. I remember one time one of my daughters came in while I was watching a baseball game. And she started saying something to me, and I said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she said, Daddy, all I want is for you to listen to me. Okay, what you need, baby? Sometimes we need that slap back into reality, don't we? We need to listen to those that are important to us. Let me give you a little something that you can do to others out there. People that aren't here today, they won't know this. But next time somebody greets you by asking you, how are you today? Respond this way. I'm fine today. I'm fine today. You'll get them to start thinking. And then you'll begin to see if they're really hearing what you're saying. You see, our lot, a lot of our listening is self-centered. We tend to focus on our needs, our concerns, and, and what others can do for us. 
This is what we need to do. We need to turn away from negative listening and hear more effectively as Jesus has instructed us to do. He says that you and I are to discipline our ears. Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you hear. Be careful what comes into this cavity and makes its way to your brain and gives stimulus to your body. Listen closely. Real listeners are basically unselfish. They forget themselves and they show real interest in others. I can tell you that when I have had difficulties in my life, I have learned over the years who I can call, who I can talk to, and who will hear what I'm going through. I know who they are. I also know those who don't give a flip that are not going to hear what I'm going through. And I don't waste my time telling them what I'm going through. Because I can tell you, they don't care. But I've got friends that are deep down in the gutter, wallow in the mud type of friends with me. And I love them. And listen closely. When somebody is telling you something, don't just say these words. This drives me crazy, and I'm sorry. And you probably say, I can't believe a preacher is saying this. I'm being a little judgmental, so I'm kind of prefacing it at the beginning. When I'm going through a difficult time, and I tell somebody what I'm going through, and they look at me and say, well, I'm going to pray for you, i got to tell you, that drives me crazy. Well, Why? Because there's a cynical part of me that wonders if they're really going to pray for me. Because, you see, we've used that little catchphrase so often that it doesn't mean diddly squat. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, we're going to keep you in our thoughts and prayers. You're not going to think of me five steps from me. You're not. So, if you're going to pray for somebody, why don't you pray for them right then? Man, I'm going through this difficult time. Let me pray for you right now. And guess what, folks? You don't have to get caught up on your quiet time. You can pray a two or three sentence prayer and be done. But you've met a need and you've made a difference. But I also have those friends who will say this. Gosh, dog it. Are y'all a trio over here in these three yellow shirts? That was wonderful. Just caught my eye. That's what the, the ADD side of me. Just look over there. Where was I? I also have friends that will say this. If there's anything that I can do right now, Apart from prayer, let me know and I'll do it. Prayers are given. Now, what can I do for you? Who's really the friend? Who's really the friend? The one that just says, I'm going to pray for you? Or the one that says, okay, beyond prayer, what can I do right now to really help you? Because I've heard what you have said, and I want to do something that's going to help you. Real listeners are basically unselfish. And where there's unselfishness in our listening, there will be concern for our neighbors. There will be concern for our friends. There will be concern for our husband, for our wife, for our children, and for our parents. When we are genuinely concerned for other people, you'll listen to a grieving friend who has lost their loved one. Even though you've heard it a thousand times, you'll still listen. When you're unselfish, you will listen to that lonely person who is aching to know if there's one person out there that really cares for them. When you're unselfish, you'll listen to the individual that doesn't have a job, that's struggling to get by month after month. When you're unselfish, you'll listen to the people who are feeling depressed, and rather than telling them just to get over it, You'll understand that there's an imbalance there. There's a sickness. And hear the hurt in their hearts. 
Sympathetic listening arises out of unselfishness. Genuine hearing involves listening with understanding. I mean, really listening with understanding. Again, I'm going to give you another little tidbit that will help you. How many times you've been involved in a conversation and somebody says this at the end of a sentence? You know what I mean? I've been having this hard time at work, you know, and it's, you just can't get along with the boss. You, you, you know what I mean? How many times have you ever heard that? Everybody? Okay, can I give you a little something? At the end of that, when they say, do you know what I mean? Say, no. Tell me. When we say yes, we're just trying to get it over with, right? So when somebody says, do you know what I mean? No. Why don't you tell me? And then it opens up an avenue, a reservoir, if you will, for them to express themselves. You see, where there's real love, there's going to be listening. If you love somebody, you're going to want to understand them better. Been married to the same woman for over 30 years, I'm still trying to understand her. Still trying to understand, but I'm, I, I'm getting better. I need to learn to also listen to and for God. We need to learn to listen to, and we all need to learn, learn to listen for God. Now, when you think about the greatest listeners who have ever walked the planet, you know who I've got to put at the very top of the list? Who would you put? I'm going to put Jesus. Anybody got a better listener than him? I, 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 I've never known one. Jesus listened to the children when they came to him. Matter of fact, he held them in his arm. Nicodemus, a, 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 a leader of the Pharisees, one of the separated ones, met Jesus at night, and, and a conversation ensued between Nicodemus and Jesus. And Nicodemus said, good teacher, we know that you're from God because nobody can do the things that you're doing unless God is with them. And Jesus looked at him and said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus, to his surprise, said, can I enter into my mother's womb and can I be born a second time? And Jesus said, you know, there are two types of birth. There is a birth of flesh and there is a birth of spirit. You must not be surprised that I tell you that you must be born again. He listened to Nicodemus. He listened to Zacchaeus when Zacchaeus said, you know, I have cheated people for all these years, but you know what? I'm going to pay back what I've cheated them plus interest. And Jesus looked at Zacchaeus and said, salvation has come to this house today. Jesus listened to him. To the woman at the well, when Jesus said, give me a drink of water. And she says, I don't have anything to draw. What do you mean, give you a drink of water? And he says, well, I tell you what, go and get your husband. She says, well, I, 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 I can't go get my husband. He says, you're right, you can't go get your husband. Because, you know what, you've been married several times, and the guy that you're living with now, shacking up with now, he's not even your husband. But I can give you living water. And he listened to her and he challenged her to be more scripture tells us how God is always listening to us listen closely get in your listening position Psalm 116 2 says that he has inclined his ear to us Psalm 34 13 his ears are open to our cry. The Bible is full of assurances that God is listening. Even when others aren't. We are challenged to listen to Him though as well. Not only is God listening, but God expects you to listen. You got to hear what He says. Well, I haven't heard from God in a long time. Well, maybe the problem isn't that he's not speaking. Maybe the problem is you're not listening. We are challenged. Young Samuel heard God call him. And finally he said, speak, Lord, for your servant has ears. Elijah heard God in a gentle whisper. Again and again, Scripture tells us 
God says, hear, O Israel. How many times does he say that? Over and over and over. Do you remember what Jesus said? Those who have ears, listen. You see, sometimes Jesus comes and speaks to us. And the voice is as gentle as a dove. Sometimes he speaks to us through a friend who is supporting us and loving us and nurturing us. Have you ever heard God speak? I I hope that you have. Hopefully you're hearing him today. I can remember back in 1986. That seems like a Another lifetime ago, 1986. Seems like a long time ago that we were saying 19, doesn't it? Now we're in 2012 or 2016, 2017. 1986. Living in Clinton, Mississippi. Had just built a house. Been working selling insurance for about a year and a half. Tommy Joe had a job with, at that time, a company known as Lamar Life Insurance Company. Y'all may remember them. They're located down on State Street. She was working her way to be an actuary. New car, new house, two good jobs, involved in church, teaching RAs. That's how I know I'm going to heaven. Teaching RAs, uh, teaching Sunday school. Seventh grade boys, David, was chaperone on every youth trip. And I can remember on a Friday afternoon uh, getting home early and mowing our yard at that new house that we'd only been in about six months. We had a cocker spaniel dog at that time by the name of Rocky. And when I finished mowing the grass, I had about an hour to kill before. I had to pick up Tommy Joe from downtown Jackson. We were living in Clinton at the time. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And people say, does God speak? Yes, he does. Nobody has ever put a muzzle on God. Now, I can tell you, there are times I'd like to put a muzzle on some people, especially some of these politicians here lately. A muzzle and a gag. But you can't muzzle God. And so I was sitting there on our front porch. Just like this. Had my dog here and I was petting him on the head. I was looking at the yard that I had just mowed. And, and I was just kind of chilling. And this is what I heard. When are you going to stop running? I heard that as clearly as you hear my voice right now. When are you going to stop running? I stood up and kind of looked around. Because when you hear an audible voice, and people say you don't hear the audible voice of God anymore, that's baloney. When are you going to stop running? And I said, Lord... I have done everything that you've asked me to do. I am involved in church. I am tithing. I am building a home here in this community. What more do you want? And he said, I wanted your vocation. And I called you in 82. And you accepted the call. And you've been running for four years. Just built this house. Just bought this car. Now enjoying my job. People in the actuarial work make good money. She's going to flip out when I tell her. Get a shower. Get in my car. Drive down State Street. Park. Wait in front of Lamar Life for her to come out. Gets in the car. We're driving. How was your day? Fine. How was your day? Fine. You know, F-I-N-E. 
feelings I'm not expressing. Anything interesting happened today? Why the loaded question, isn't it? How do you tell your bride that you've heard from God? Yeah, something interesting did happen today. Well, what happened? That's a funny thing. I was sitting on our front porch. By the way, yard's mode. And uh, God spoke to me. Silence. What did he say? <laughs> You're not going to like this. He told me that I have to give him my vocation. And he asked me when I was going to stop running from it. I'm waiting now for this onslaught of how could you, how could we. And there was just silence. And with all the strength that she had to muster up, she fought back the tears. I thought she was crying because we're going to have to sell this house that we had just built. And she said, you know, when I was in high school, I felt the Lord calling me to be a pastor's wife. But I never wanted to put that pressure on you. Whatever you need to do, we'll do. It's amazing what happens when you tune in to God and you hear what He says and then you obey. My prayer for you is that you'll hear God today and in hearing God you will say, thank you God for also listening to me. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity to converse with you, to talk with you. I pray that we would tune our hearts to be receptive to the message that you've given us today. In your son's name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation to allow you to respond what you've seen, what you've felt, what you've heard here. I hope that you've heard something this morning. I hope you've heard from God. Maybe this morning you come giving your heart to Christ. You don't have to have all the answers or know everything. The only thing you have to be willing to do is to respond. Maybe this morning you come rededicating your life or transferring to church membership. If you're looking for a perfect church, you need to keep on looking. This is not it. We have an imperfect staff, we, but we serve a perfect God. And I believe God's doing marvelous things here on this hill. Lives are being changed, and we're going to be a beacon of light and hope to this community. Can't wait till the sanctuary is finished. Maybe this morning you come to the altar of God to pray. Any decision you feel the Lord ask you to make you do that as we stand and prayerfully sing together.